What up, Famski? This is your friendly neighborhood resident Portuguese thick boy, Eric Lima here. You are watching yet another video episode from my from my secondary YouTube channel vlogging, which I present to all of you. My sentimental thoughts come from my heart and my soul. I'm a mental oddball shenanigans. Come from the mind and brain. This is ZML77 TV, episode 920. What's going on, everybody? I hope everyone is having a wonderful, wonderful night. And I know y'all must be sleeping by now, but I'm doing a video so I can get this thing out of the way and done. So I can get cleared for tomorrow. So I can clear, clear my, uh, so I can clear my video scheduling for tomorrow for my YouTube show. Alright, uh, SmackDown and 205 Live just happened. A lot of things. The SmackDown season premiere. Um, recap, Stephanie McMahon and Triple H kicked off SmackDown season premiere. Introducing some of the new faces and, and familiar faces of SmackDown, and then a bra and then as the Street Profits were getting inter introduced, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode ruined the moment by attacking them from behind. Then a brawl broke out. Lars Sullivan arrived, took out a couple a couple of guys, Shorty G and Apollo Crews, while Sami Zayn decided to bail out. Jeff Hardy arrives. They had a matchup, and Jeff Hardy did everything he could, but could not keep. The, the freak down, and then you hit the twist to fake the freak to set up from that, and then hit the freak grab Jeff Hardy from off the ropes, and hit it, hit it, hit the uh, freak accident, and Lars Sullivan picked up the victory. Lars Sullivan will be a threat to the Universal Title. I wouldn't be surprised if that happened down the road. But and then you got the Intercontinental Title too, so Lars Sullivan could be a threat to any title. But we'll see what happens in in the future. So watch and watch in the future. The New Day's farewell match was a six-man tag against the team of Cesaro, Nakamura, and Sheamus. As New, New Day um, cut a promo saying how they um, for, they had been together for six years and how most of their, most of the careers were at a crossroads and, and they went until they met each other and created something special. And you know what? Those three gentlemen are doing a wonderful job and done a wonderful job and. Uh, they got a little emotional, and this would be the last time the three of them are together. Corey Graves obviously is happy. He gets annoyed by the New Day. Uh, Caleb Braxton interviews Seamus and Zaro Nakamura. They were looking forward to ruining New Day's one final match at, together as a trio. As Big E, to the draft, Big E will be remaining on SmackDown, while Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston, the new Raw Tag Team Champions, will be heading to Monday Night Raw, obviously. Kofi Mania. Kofi Mania. Kofi Mania. All right. Um, so they they fought. It was a heck of a matchup. Double team, triple team, frequent tags, action, nonstop action. And in the end, uh, the New Day ended up picking the victory. Uh, picking up the victory, and they hugged each other. Big E telling them, you know, you guys are my brothers. I'm really proud of you. And, and you know, and they all believe that Big E's going to be shining in singles competition. They're going to try to get him more serious and away from the uh, – do day persona type, so so it'll be very interesting to see what happens with now Big E going on his own, and Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods will continue the legacy of the New Day over on Monday Night Raw. Bianca Belair had a vignette uh, with all the stuff that she's done in the Combine of NXT and all that, and I think after Sasha Banks and Bailey, who knows for sure what Bianca Belair could be. And then Caleb Braxton came back to interview the money, Mr. Moneybank Otis, and then Sami Zayn decided to interrupt him, and then decided to put the, um, provoke him by saying, oh, Tucker's now on Raw, so is Mandy Rose. Sami Zayn, and then Otis pushed him down. Sami Zayn, quit running him out, dude. Daniel Bryan made his Thunderdome debut. He says he mentioned all the superstars that uh, he's looking forward to fighting, and then Seth Rollins arrived. Starts running his mouth, and then the two... Seth Rollins punched Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan fought back. And then the Mysterios arrived. Seth Rollins wanted to make an alliance with Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan says, not my problem. See you later. And then they're about to double team him. Murphy arrived. And then Murphy attacked Rollins. He extended the hands of Mysterios, but the Mysterios walked away. They still don't trust. They still do not trust Buddy Murphy. They don't trust him at all. Um, Jay Glazer from Fox Sports talks of the WWE draft. Um, draft what they think and what he thinks of the matchup. They say Braun Strowman cannot walk away with the championship or else he'll turn SmackDown in, into flux. 
Um, a brief return in a pre-show with Renee Young. She left the company after eight years with them, and they, and she was hired by Fox Sports. And then you got the SmackDown Tag Team Titles on Line Street Profits and Ziggler versus Ziggler and Rude. The two teams went at it, and I got the two the two teams went at it, and it was heck of a matchup until Ziggler and Rude got out of control. On um, the referee Jessica Carr had to ring tell people to ring the bell. It was the Profits win by the, uh, as a result of a disqualification. And they kept right on fighting, and then but the Street Profits stood tall in the end with the tag team championship titles. And then you got the Bailey Sasha Banks Hell in a Cell contract signing about a week from this Sunday. Ba- Sasha Banks signed the contract, but Bailey did not sign it. So I don't know what, what's up with Bailey. I don't know what, and if I don't know what's going to convince who's going to convince Bailey to sign that contract to SmackDown. Uh, that SmackDown, I mean, to Hell in a Cell matchup. I don't know what Bailey's doing, but, you know, people say she's smart. Uh, Corey Gray says she's being smart. We'll find out as we go along here. <clears throat> and uh, and then we got celebrities like Ken Jeong, uh, Card Sharks host uh, Joe McHale, George Kittle, um, congratulating SmackDown on their season premiere on Fox, their second season premiere. They're looking forward to see what they got. George Kittle is a big fan of Seth Rollins. Uh, Seth Rollins. Uh, Joe McHale is a big fan of the Intercontinental Champion Sami Zayn. I gotta tell you, that's gonna be very, very interesting to say the least. And then they had the t- Universal Title match against Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. Both men fought. I mean, they fought. They beat the tar each other. And the the, the it's like the, the rivalry has not ended. I mean, it started over on Raw a few years ago, and. Um, you know, the people, a lot of people were on the Thunderdome tonight. Some dignitaries like uh, Jeff Jarrett, um, WB Hall of Famer Jeff Jarrett, Ric Flair, Brie Bella, along with her daughter Birdie to watch. I've heard that Keith Lee was watching, uh, and then Goldberg, another Hall of Famer, was watching that match from the Thunderdome as well. So that's going to be very interesting to see what would happen. A lot of people said, oh, we don't want to see Goldberg fight. Goldberg and Roman Reigns were supposed to fight at WrestleMania, but that didn't match happen because Roman Reigns had to back out. And that's where Strowman came in. So, Reigns did win the title by submission. It's a rarity that Roman Reigns used a submission hole to beat somebody. It's a rare, rare, um, rare occurrence indeed. and made Strowman tap out. I don't think Strowman's ever tapped out before prior to this one. So that's what was kind of shocking. And then, Roman Reigns stood tall. Jay Uso arrived. Was, and then Roman Reigns says, hey, I don't want to do this. You can back out. But then he starts beating up on Braun Strowman. He's using a steel chair and everything else. But then Jay Uso was fighting, was fighting his conscience. And then all of a sudden, he stepped in the ring. Roman Reigns says, listen, this is going to be you and Hell in a Cell. I don't want to do this to you. I love you. And all of a sudden, and then he, and then he turns around and says, hit me. Hit me with a steel chair. Jay Uso grabbed the chair, put it down, and then he turned, and Roman Reigns turned around. And he says, You know what? And he punched Roman Reigns right in the face. And he's hitting Roman Reigns. He says, You know me, Uso. You know me. You know me. And then all of a sudden, the two went at it. And then Roman Reigns hit Jay Uso with the Superman punch. So, and Roman Reigns walked out of there a little hurt and beaten, but uh, still is your reigning Universal Heavyweight Champion. I think this is going to be more personal now in the Hell in a Cell match between Jay Uso and Roman Reigns. This is going to be a very interesting. Uh, matchup to say the least, and I'm sure a lot of people are watching. A lot of people, a lot of family members saying, jumping on Jay Uso's side, side. We probably don't trust Paul Heyman. And personally, I think Paul Heyman may be responsible for what's going to go on. So, and, and, so, we, it'll be, like I said, again, it'll be something to watch when Jay Uso and Reigns went, go at it and hell in the cell. And uh, we had 205 Live. Two of the new PC uh, Performance Center recruits had a shot against Arya Davari for $10,000. Uh, Anthony Green. Now, I watched Anthony Green. Um, I saw Anthony Green live at a live sh- wrestling show a few years ago when, I, when the Wellington City Festival was on. And this is before South – I would say the last year that yeah, South that Top Row Promotions was doing the Wellington City Festival – was the last year, and now in that final year of Tough Ropes doing the Wales State Festival, Anthony Green was 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 wrestling in action. He was just a young kid. He teamed up with Kanzagami, known as the 
Cam and Connection. Um, but I think they picked up a victory. They, they, you know, he was very young, very spry, but he was part of the cruiserweight um, division, so to speak, because he went, because he decided, because um, he took up on, you know, Davari challenged the two new recruits. They took him up on it, and so they, there was it was a well fought match, but Davari ended up dominating it most of the time, ended up beating him with his finishing maneuver. One, two, three. Kurt Stallion headed to the ring, taking his time. He knew that, you know. And smart, smart move on his part because he knew that Davari took a place in, his, in a matchup already. So you think you know, getting tired and all that, and uh, and then Kurt Stallion was doing so well until Tony Nese got involved, hit hit Stallion with the running knees, and Kurt Stallion was matched by DQ. But Davari took the money, but Davari says it has to be bit by pitfall or submission. So that was a stipulation. So that, you know, I personally am thinking that it was a great, great thing. So that Kurt Stallion did pick up a win by DQ. And then uh, the main event for the 205 Live, D. Brian Kendrick went one-on-one with Isaiah Swerve Scott. These two had a, a great matchup, and then Brian Kendrick hurt his, like, left shoulder during the matchup, and Isaiah Swerve Scott. The good thing about wrestling is is that most of the people, when a body part is injured, or taped up. The opponent goes after that target, and that's what happened here. You know, Brian Ke- D. Brian Kendrick um, hurt his shoulder a little bit, or bruised his shoulder, and Isaiah Swerve, Scott, Isaiah Swerve Scott picked up on that and worked on it, and then Brian and Kendrick, D. Brian Kendrick fought back, tried to use the captain's hook, and then Sir, Swerve Scott got out of it, and then and then Isaiah Swerve Scott, after a hard-fought match, pinned him in the end, and then all of a sudden he extended his hands towards uh, uh, Brian Kendrick, and Brian Kendrick wanted to walk away. He said, no, no, don't do that, man. Listen, I have a lot of respect for you and all. The two shook hands. It was a great matchup nonetheless. And, you know, Brian Kendrick will be okay, and I think he's going to get that shoulder checked out, man. So that's for the season premiere of SmackDown and of 205 Live. Now, 205 Live doesn't have a season premiere. But what, nevertheless, that is um, that's a recap. For um, both, you know, the Raw season premiere will be starting this Monday. So it will be very interesting with all the new faces around. We will find out what is going to happen now. So we know Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton are not going to stop until until Hell in a Cell. And they're still going to be beating the tire of each other. You know, Strowman and Keith Lee will go one-on-one again in the in in the uh, season premiere. So that matchup, I'm sure Keith Lee's picked up a few things. In the United States title match, because not in the United States, the Universal title match, because Keith Lee says he was, he is going to be watching that matchup. All right, that's all the time I have on the show. I'm getting a little tired. It's 11:03 p.m. Uh, episode 920 of EML 77 TV. I had everything straightened out, and I will see you guys later. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day, and uh, I will see you. In episode 921. Peace. Good night.